Hi, Chuck Vosberg here. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use a quick mask. And a quick mask is another way to get to a selection. So in this example, I'd like to get a nice selection of this bird. And using the magic wand tool will get us part of the way there. In fact, let me click on the bird here. And, and you can see it, it, it got a good section of it. But we'll just start with this. Now down at the bottom of the toolbox is the quick mask button. It's this one right here. So when I turn that on, because I already had a selection, it starts off with a mask based on the selection. The red parts are masked out, and the clear parts are the parts we're going to keep. Now this red is kind of translucent so we can see what we're doing. And we control this mask with our paintbrush tool. So I'm going to choose my paintbrush tool. And then up here in the top in the options bar, I'm going to choose a hard-edged brush. And one thing you need to know sh keyboard shortcut-wise is that the bracket buttons control the size of the brush. That way you don't have to keep going up here and guessing what number you need. Just use the brackets. Those are next to the letter P on the keyboard. So what we're going to do here is use these little color swatches right here. Black will add a mask to it. You can see that's adding the mask. And then if we cl click this little tiny curved arrow here to switch them, if white is in the front, it erases the mask. You can see how that works. So the nice thing about this is it's impossible to mess up. If we were to make a mistake like I did here, we simply go over here and switch these colors. Black paints the mask in. And white removes the mask. So I'm going to go in here and just clean this up quickly. But before I do, I want to explain something about these swatches here in the toolbox. There's a little small curved arrow right here next to the swatches that switch them. Or if you're into keyboard shortcuts, you can use the letter X on your keyboard to switch them. But if you click on the swatch itself, it brings up the color picker. Now the color picker is not useful to us right now because we just need black and white. So just click cancel on this and use the little curved arrow to switch them up. Now if you accidentally change these, there's a very small black and white preset down here underneath the swatches that'll put them back to normal very quickly. So again, impossible to mess up. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this so I can see. And then use my paintbrush tool. I'm going to reduce the size using the bracket buttons. And I need to remove the mask from this area. So I'll click the swap arrow here to switch these up and just remove the mask from this area. And I'm just going to do this quickly so that I won't bore you. Move on down here. Okay, we've got another little section to clean up. This is much, much easier if you use a pressure sensitive tablet, you know, like a Wacom tablet. And um, again, I'm just going to do this very quickly. The nice thing about this is if you do mess up, you switch the colors and fix it up. Okay, so we'll just assume this is a nice, beautiful selection here. And we've got this mask painted in. Alright, so the way to convert this into a selection is to go down here and unclick the quick mask button in the bottom of the toolbox, right here. And you can see it's converted that into a selection. But I made a mistake right here. I clicked a couple times accidentally with my mouse and left a couple holes in the bird. So we can go back into quick mask mode and fix that. So I'm in my paintbrush tool. I'll fix that up. 
then go out of quick mask mode by clicking on the quick mask button. Okay, my selection looks good now. So now we could select the bird, copy and paste it into another picture, or isolate this bird so that we could change just it. But let me first show you. Under the select menu at the top of the screen, it's a good idea to save your selections. So I'm going to go down here under the select menu to save selection and just give this a name that makes sense to me and click OK. Now that selection is saved. If we were to go back later on and need that selection, that selection's been saved with this picture now. So I can go to the select menu, go on down to load selection, and choose it out of the list here. You can actually have up to 99 saved selections per picture in Photoshop. So in this case there's just one. I click OK and it brings back the selection just the way I wanted it. Now while we're on the topic of selections there's one other thing I'd like to show you. At this point the bird is selected so anything that I were to do would affect only the bird. We could copy and paste it, we could go into the filter menu and apply an artistic filter, but what if we wanted to do something to just the background. We want the background selected instead of the bird. Well, under the Select menu, there's a command called Inverse. And that just makes the selection the opposite of what it is. So now everything except the bird is selected. So if we were to go and, just for example, if we went under the Filter menu and um, We'll just pick something at random here that really shows it would only affect the selected areas. So using these selections can really give you a lot of control. So I'm going to go under Edit and undo that. So selections are easy. I recommend saving your selections. And Quick Mask is a very easy way to get a selection, especially on complex objects like this that would take forever to do using any other methods. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Chuck Vosberg, and good luck with your Photoshop.